now. Uh, so this thing is going to be due not this week, not next week, but the week after. Um, the reason being, I don't mind giving you all the time in the world to try this, but if you've gotten a chance to look at our, uh, I guess, course outline for the, for the quad, you see that we're going to continue moving on. So the official due date is not next Friday, but the Friday after, the 25th. You have plenty of time to do it. That's a full two weeks. Uh, but get started ahead of time, especially so that um, you have the opportunity to ask me questions by coming to office hours, connecting with other people around you, especially if there's a, you know, some difficulty with a certain question, um, and so on and so forth. Okay, give that a shot. So I'm going to go back to sharing our uh, Rational Expressions package, uh, practice package. Okay, so annotation, pen. Here we go. Questions 1, 2, 3, and 4 are very similar to the ones I already uh, practiced with you. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to skip that a little bit. I want to get started on some of the more creative questions because um, it's essentially the first time you've seen it. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. I'd like us to try number five together. And then I'd like you to try number seven on your own, knowing that, oh, this is something that you can do. And then number six is what I consider to be a bit more challenging. We'll do that together and we'll call it a day for our first morning session. Okay. Um, Helen, it says, I don't understand how it says state any restrictions like A, B, C, but there are no equations on the shared sheet. Uh, um, Helen, you're, you're, the situation you're in is pretty common. Would you, instead of opening up the uh, preview, can you actually download it? For some reason, Google has a difficult time um, showing a preview of the, the math, um, math editor like math equation editor that's built into Microsoft Word uh, on preview. I think it's a coding issue. So um, if it's not in a PDF format, if it's in Word document or whatnot, they don't like to show it in preview. I don't know why. So if you download it, it'll open up nicely for you. Okay. Hope you got it. Great. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that I can, perfect. All right, um, it would be nice if I could pick on a couple of people, but if you don't, if you're not quite sure or you want to pass, just pass, okay? I have no problem with you saying I'm not quite sure as long as you stay with it and stay with us, okay? Consider the equation y is equal to 2x squared minus 13x plus 20 all divided by x minus 4. What is the restriction? How about I go backwards today? Uh, Zoe, are you with us? Um, yes. Um, would you be able to answer the first part? What's the restriction? Um, positive 4. Positive 4. Well done. X cannot be positive 4. The next question says, what kind of relation is this? What I meant by that is, is it a linear? Is it a quadratic? Or is it neither? Which means, I want to get you all to simplify for me. Alright? So y is equal to x minus 4. This has to turn into a bracket. I'm going to give you a minute, and then uh, who's after Zoe? Zane, Zane T. Uh, wondering if I could pick on you first. Everyone give it a shot. I'll give you a couple of minutes. See if you can factor the top, and then Zane, I'm coming to you to see if you've gotten it or not. You can pass, or you can give me an answer, whether it's right or wrong. Just do your best.
Um, Helen, what sheet are we doing right now? Um, it is the 2.1, 2.2 rational expressions package. <coughs> it is uh, this one, number four. <coughs> Take a look at that one. And don't worry, I don't have COVID. Something got caught in my throat. Ugh. Oh no, did it disappear? When I share something else? I guess it does. <coughs> oh gosh. And y is equal to... Hey, Zane T, how far did you get? <clears throat> Zane T, you with us? Oh man, is the man sleeping? Uh, Zane D, <laughs> can you help him in his place? Yeah, I'm not sure how to do it. That's okay. No problem. Uh, Waylon? Uh, I tried to do it, but... I give, it a, give it a shot. Uh, for this, do we need to find like the two numbers that multiply to 20 and add up to 13? Close. You have to multiply to 40 and add to negative 13 because this oh, is a yeah. complex. Multiply by 2. Okay. Yeah. Can you think of them? Yeah, I know. I'm so mean. Lucky, luckily, there aren't too many possibilities. Give me one, and we'll try it. I honestly, like, can't think of one right now. I'll continue to think of one, but... Okay, I'm going to walk you through. One times what? One times 40? Yeah, but that doesn't add to negative 13, so cross that. 2 times? 20. 20. That doesn't add to 13. No, 3 doesn't divide. 4 times? 10. 10. That doesn't add to 13, but it's really close. It is. 5 times? 8. 8. Yes, that does That work. adds to positive 13, so we must be dealing with? Uh, negative 5 and negative 8. Because two negatives multiply to a positive, but they still add to a negative. That's it. Okay. So we got 2x squared minus uh, 5x minus 8x plus 20. Group factor. This becomes 2x minus 5. I'm going to factor out a negative 4. This becomes 2x minus 5. So the bracket must be 2x minus 5 and x minus 4. Well, what do you know? Coincidence? Okay. I'm going to divide both by 1 so that this actually um, simplifies into 2x minus 5. What kind of relation is this? Uh, Saima? Linear, I think. Linear. Yeah, <laughs> this is linear. It's, it's a y equals mx plus b. All of this, if we were to graph it, is simply a straight line. And so in the grade 11 level, I'm actually going to expect you to know how to do that on a whim without you studying. So let's review it very quickly. Okay. Uh, roughly sketch 2x minus 5 on the graph. From the look of it, Slope is a 2 over 1, so rise over run, and my y-intercept is negative 5. Uh, Patrick, can you walk me through how would I go about accurately drawing a straight line? What is, what is something that I can do to start? Patrick sleeping? Going once? Going twice? No, I'm here. I'm just a little confused right now. Sorry. 
uh, from from the equation or how we got there? I just want to answer, answer any questions you might have. Would you like to just, okay, we'll, we'll pass for now. Try to, try to keep up and see if you can formulate a question to ask to help yourself, okay? Even that is training. Uh, Noam? Um, start at negative five. Sure. Where, where negative five? There are on two the places. Y, on the y-axis. Perfect. Um, so this, if you're drawing a straight line, that's essentially where you want to start. A B value of negative 5 means the y-intercept is a negative 5. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right there. Okay. On your piece of paper, you can sketch it roughly as well. Don't worry about being neat as long as I see uh, the points uh, in, the, in the correct location. Okay. Uh, next. My movement is rise over run, two up and one to the right. So let me use a different color. One, one, two, one. One, two, one. One, two, one. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, one, one, two, one. I think you get the point. I'm going to go ahead and draw a straight line through it. And that is my linear equation. Y equals 2x minus 5. The quick recap, start with the y-intercept and then use the slope as your rate of change or your movement. <clears throat> problem. One thing that is new in grade 11 that you didn't have to worry about in grade 10. Problem. Anyone can guess what the issue is in this scenario. Going once. Going twice. It's this. What do we just say that this uh, function cannot be, this relation cannot be? Can't be a 4. Take a look here. That's 1. That's x equals 2. That's x equals 3. That's x equals 4. x can't be a 4. <clears throat> so I need to somehow show visually, I mean, in words, I could write x can't be a 4, but what does that look like visually? Now think about it. I can have 3.99999. I still can have 4.11111, whatever. Okay? I just can't have it exactly at 4. How can I illustrate that? How can I show that visually? How do you think mathematicians did it? And of course, we're the cre most creative people in the world, right? Not really. How do you think we can visually show that 4 does not exist for the world to see? It has to be clean, it has to be clear, it has to be simple. What would you suggest as a mathematician? First person who suggests gets perfect on the next assignment. Sorry, what's the question? <laughs> the question was, I have a straight line, but x can't equal a 4. How do you think this is represented on this line? In the world of math, how do you think we show that x can't equal a 4 on the graph? X does not pass through a 4. Yes, but this is still in writing. How do I show it as a picture, as a graph? What do you think I do to the graph? How do you think I show it on the graph? Erase the point. 
okay, okay. And if I erase that point, the line still goes through it. That could be misleading to some. It may not be clear because the line is still there. How do I show that right at four, it can't be possible? It doesn't. Erase the line right at that point. Erase, oh, erase the line at that point and instead leave a gap. Leave a gap. Oops. Good. That's exactly what happened. Mathematicians being the most creative people in the world, obviously. We go up until 4. Right after 4, we continue as if nothing ever happened. But right in the middle, we literally draw an empty circle and we call this a hole. A hole is at x equals, x equals 4. Yeah, it, it's literally called a hole. Okay, there is a hole at x equals 4 is what we say because of the restriction. Pretty messed up, eh? It is what it is. Any questions about this one? Couldn't you just draw it normally because like this graph isn't 100% precise? Correct, but we still have to represent this somehow. Otherwise, it would be incorrect. It doesn't, it wouldn't be any different than a line without the restriction. And so there has to be a distinction between the two. <laughs> so if there's multiple restrictions, there will be a bunch of holes. Yes, that is correct. Like, for example, let's say the final, final equation was a parabola like this. And then you can't have x equals negative 1 or uh, 2 or 5 or something. You'd probably have a hole here, uh, have a hole here, and like have a hole here. It'll be it'll, it'll look funny for sure. But that's how we represent it in math. It's sort of silly. Okay, all right. Without further ado, um, I don't want to lose your attention. I'm gonna get everyone to break out into groups, and we're gonna try number seven together. It's uh it's not necessarily complicated. It's just a little longer. Uh, here's another way we can apply um, apply uh, rational expressions in the form of geometry. Find the simplified expression for the perimeter and the area of a trapezoid. Please note, uh, I forgot to draw this, but you can pretend that this is perfectly vertical, so this can serve as the height. The area of a trapezoid, or the perimeter of a trapezoid, is just adding all four sides. The area of a trapezoid is um, the length of one of the parallel lines plus the length of the other parallel line, and you average it, so you divide that by two, and that is multiplied by the height. In case you wanted to connect with your previous knowledge in grade nine, by averaging the short end and the long end, you're actually you're literally creating a middle an average length between the two, and you're multiplying the height as if it was a regular rectangle. But anyways, that's for another day. Okay, so it is what it is. Length of parallel length, one, and the length of parallel length, two, is added together. You divide it by two, and then you multiply it by the height. All right, I'm gonna break you off into groups of three. As usual, you guys can um, divvy up the work as you see fit. And then maybe in about five minutes, I can bring you back out. We'll check the answers together. Uh, please, you already know, if you need me to come in and visit and you have a question to ask, you can um, press the, the little button and it will show me a little window saying, uh, I want, you know, room five needs me or something. Okay. Uh, go ahead and try to finish number seven together.
Oh. Smart, I want. Moira, you made it. Yes. Okay, who is not around? Ian, are you still around? Kinda, are you with us? chat then today's Mona, if you're here, uh, stay put. Don't worry too much. Everyone's just trying number seven together. I think uh, with you, you could probably figure it out yourself. Okay. So don't worry too much. Oh. I'm Mr. Cam. Um, hey. 
Oh, I think you're muted. I think, uh... I should be good now. What's up? Um, I did it, and I'm stuck with a binomial, and I don't, I don't, I don't think it's a difference of squares because um, it's not seven isn't a perfect square, right? Okay. Okay. So I have seven x minus one. But I don't think that's right. You're close. It's I believe it's seven x minus two, but that's that's a perimeter, right? Yeah. Yeah. I actually I actually got minus two, but I erased it because I got one minus one minus one gives me negative two. Or er, sorry, um, plus one minus one right, minus right. one gives me negative one. Yep, it's so, it's minus two. Okay, all right. Got Thanks. So, yeah. So in this particular case, the perimeter is only an expression. That's okay though, because all we have to do from there is if you find x, you plug in x and you find perimeter, right? Like, that's the whole point of rational expressions. So you got it. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yep. Try the uh, area if you can. Okay. How do I leave this place? I can. Uh, are you with us? Okay, it's okay. Um, what we're doing right now is trying number seven. Um, don't worry too much. See if you can get that going on your own. Let's see. And I would prefer to, if possible. Hmm. <clears throat> I guess I'm recording my basement background throughout the entire thing today. Uh, Mr. Kim. Yes. We have a couple different ideas for the area. Like we don't know, like how you want it written because it can be like written different ways. Right? Um. Elaborate. Okay. So one of our ideas for the area is in brackets 2x and then in other brackets x minus 1. As in the final answer is either 2x or x minus 1? No. Like that as a whole because 2x is gotten from um, Yeah. No, you're correct. The, the correct. Yeah. yeah, and then our other thing is 2x squared minus 2x. Wasn't that just x? That's our other. But then, when can that be simplified to just x? Well, like or, no, because that's an exponent, I guess. Yes. So, um, two x squared minus two x and two x bracket x minus one. They're one and the same. Just one happens to be factored, and the other one is expanded. Okay, so that that would just be the area. Both are correct. Yeah. Okay. Good work. Yeah. So I'll just go through it. Uh, for people, I believe everyone is out. Perimeter, I'm just going to 2x minus 1 plus x plus 1 plus x minus 1 plus 3x minus 1. Put that together, it should be 7x minus 2. For the area, we've got the first parallel side 
added to the last uh, other parallel side divided by 2 multiplied by the uh, height, which happens to be 4x divided by 2 times x minus 1, simplified or reduced, 2x bracket x minus 1, and then you just multiply it out. Okay? Any questions before we get to the fun one? Going once, going twice. Actually, yeah, I have a question. What's up? Um, so when you have two x squared minus two x, are you able to subtract that two x from the two x squared? No. Um, a term with x squared um, versus a term with just x, that square essentially means um, two x x minus 2x. Uh, they're on different realms. You could think about different universes. You, you can't put them together. Because of the order of operations, right? Or like the exponent is like attached to x. Yeah, the exponent makes it a huge deal. Yeah. It's, it's a, a completely different... Um, in the math, we call it an order. Like, doesn't that sound sort of daunting and scary? Like, 2x squared is a higher order and 2x. Like, anyways, <clears throat> that's what it is. Uh, number six is what I want to get to, and this is going to be open to everyone to consider. Okay, so here's a T style question. Okay, I have a polynomial that was divided by 3x plus 1, and the answer was this What was the original polynomial? Once I do it, you'll realize it's not as bad as you think. However, at first glance, it might seem a little daunting. I'm going to give you a minute to at least think about how you could approach this question, and then we will, um, and then we'll solve it together. Oh, t sorry, Lucas. Uh, T is the the thinking inquiry category. It's the types of questions where um, even though you practiced doing the math, um, the thinking inquiry is like, it's like a puzzle, but it involves the math that we learned in that chapter. And the only way you can solve this puzzle is by using the, the, the kind of math that we did in the chapter. Any thoughts? It's not easy, so actually don't expect people to, you know, get it right away, but anyone want to offer a guess as to what they might have tried? Anyone want to give it a try, even though it's wrong? Anyone want to go outside and play? Anyone here? Yes. <laughs> yeah, let's put it this way. Um, there's there's a couple of ways you can think about this. Um, let's say I was a student. One thing I can say is, hey, well, on the left side, everything is under or divided by 3x plus 1. Maybe I want this to also have the same denominator as 3x plus 1. So maybe I can go ahead and try multiplying by 1, just like we learned in be before, to make it 3x plus 1, right? Um, that's one way you could have thought about it. Another way is like, okay, so I know that there is a 5 involved, right? I also know that, just logically speaking, uh, let's use a black. Um, after being divided by 3x plus 1, the 2x minus 3 is left. So to reverse it, or to reverse engineer it, what can I do? 
What is the reverse of division? Multiplication. Multiplication. Let's multiply to uh, 3x plus 1 back in. But of course, I can't just multiply 3x plus 1 just because I want to. And so I'm doing the same thing as I mentioned before about making the denominator the same. I am going to multiply with 1 in hopes that I can multiply 3x plus 1 back in legally. If I want to multiply the top part with 3x plus 1, the only way I could do that is multiply with 1. I can't add a quantity other than 1 to the mix, right? And so let's get to it. Uh, I don't have much space. Maybe I can move this to the side a little bit. Oh, perfect. And then I will select all of this. Oh, jeez. And I will move it. Like that. And I will select this and I'll move it here. All right, here we go. So if I were to multiply this out, I get uh, 2x minus 2x minus, oh my gosh, my life, 2x minus 3 times 3x plus 1, all over 3x plus 1, and I have the extra 5 after. Let me do a distributive property, 6x squared plus 2x minus 9x minus 3, And then, of course, the plus 5 again. Leaves me with the same denominator, 6x squared minus 7x plus 2. The missing polynomial originally in the question must have been 6x squared plus 7x, oh, sorry, minus 7x plus 2. Pretty wild, huh? When you see the answer, you're like, oh, I could have done that. But that's the whole point of thinking. You have the math. You have the, the knowledge for it. It's just a matter of looking at a puzzle or looking at things differently and seeing how you could make that math work for you. Um, and you'll find the thinking inquiry is probably one of your most challenging parts of this course. But that's for everyone. Don't think you're alone in that. Thinking inquiry is not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to challenge your thinking and apply what you know in obscure scenarios. Any questions? Going once, going twice. Saima, are you talking? I see you you um, being highlighted, but you're muted. Okay, that's probably weird on me then. Okay, here's what we're going to do then. Um, it's 5 to 10, or 6 to 10. I'm going to set you free and take your break and we'll reconvene back at 10.15. During this time, I also want to remind you that the problem set is live. And that is not due until two weeks from now, but I highly recommend you get started early because, well, it's a problem set. Starting early means you can contact and reach out to your classmates a little bit more. Um, is there a way that you can share contact? I'm not sure if that's a good idea for me to instigate because it's like forcing my students to make their emails and stuff known or whatnot. Um, but yeah, see if there is a way that you can um, 
like reach out with each other and work together if possible. All right. Um, of course, you can use our chat group at 11:30 as a hub. Anyways, 9:55. Let's get back together at 10:15, and we're gonna start on 1.4. So during the break, maybe you can have that printed out. I am going to use my document camera and fill in this document so that as we go, we have the answers and then I could put the answers up online for you to double check. Okay, we'll see you at 10.15.